Hello, my name is Neto Rosatelli and welcome to the Cataract Surgery Channel. This commented surgery is a hard cataract case in which the presence of a significant posterior capsular fibrosis induced me to do a posterior capsular axis. Incisions are being done with a 2.75 black diamond keratome and a 1 mm stab knife. It is a hard cataract that was in its way to become a white one with a very hard brownish nucleus, perhaps with some intumescence, and luckily the patient got the opportunity to be operated before that. 0.5% lidocaine and tripan blue are injected and a nice wave of dispersive OVD removes the excess dye and we can get to business. Even though this will be a long video, I decided to edit out only the little time so as to show more of the events and technique and have a little more time to comment on things. In hard cataract cases it is wise to perform a rexis more to the large side, like in this one done with an engraved Inamura forceps to about 5.5 mm in diameter. Hydrodissections is judiciously done to avoid Miyake syndrome as these cases have little cortex and the hard nucleus can easily block fluid egress from the bag ensuring a posterior capsule rent and a dropped nucleus. A little eye wash is done with the fecal handpiece and we go inside. As I make the incision in the posterior limbus, conch opening is needed to avoid ballooning. And now comes a maneuver I find very useful, the nucleus spin. It may seem overkill and aggressive, but it isn't. If you watch carefully, you see that the bag is completely still with no radial force whatsoever applied to the zonules. It took me 8 seconds to loosen the nucleus and to spin it 6 times in each direction, applying the fulcrum principle, which is one of the most important skills for the surgeon to master. It really helps to loosen the attached cortex saving IA time ahead. Despite being a hard nucleus, I'm able to mechanically fracture it in many pieces, saving US emission to be done only when emulsifying the pieces. I like to completely divide the nucleus first and then afterwards to emulsify all the pieces. It is much more efficient and safer. The less you move, the better. The cracking was incomplete for some pieces and that was an error. I resort to go with the fecal probe for the posterior plate still attaching the pieces and emulsify it. But the smart and safer move would be to stop, reposition the pieces back in the bag and proceed separating them one by one from the other. The last and most dangerous fragment is taken with care, the chopper assisting in protecting the capsule. These cases often need a lot of posterior capsule polishing and that's what I'm doing now with the fecal tip. I go all around and clean as much as I can safely do. There is some central fibrosis that will not come out by polishing. Some strange cortex remains and I go for the IA probe. I finish cortex cleanup and there was not much of it mostly because of the nucleus spin done previously. I'm not satisfied with this fibrotic posterior capsule. It's a ring in the middle periphery, the central part is relatively spared. 
I decided to do a posterior capsular axis in order to remove the opaque fibrotic part and still implant the IOL in the bag. I then filled the anterior chamber and the bag with OVD, the fine wrinkling of the posterior capsule being a good sign, indicating an already detached anterior hyaloid. The key is not to fill the bag too much, so here I titrate a little until the point I want. If too much filled, you will have a steep axis angle to the capsule and the tendency of the capsule to run is greater. I use a 30 gauge needle to slightly open a hole in the capsule and you can see that while penetrating the capsule I lift it to separate it from the anterior hyaloid and avoid rupture in the latter. This tiny hole is enough. I then inject OVD in the burger's space with a thin cannula and make a cushion underneath the capsule encompassing the area of the intended axis. I use the anterior axis margin as my guide and try to make the opening a little smaller. Here I go spiraling out until the desired diameter is reached. Making the posterior axis smaller makes it easier to implant the IOL. You have to go with the flow constantly adjusting your pulling and it is easier if there is no tension on the capsule. At the end, the fibrosis leads the tear a bit outside, but I'm able to rescue it and it is not going to be an issue. Success! Now, I fill the space between the two capsules rims with OVD to facilitate correct placement. This is an important step. Guess what's happening now? The patient is having a cuffing fit. Yes, with the posterior capsule wide open and the anterior hyaloid laughing at my horrified face. I gather all the courage I can and center the eye back to take a look. And it is unbelievable. Things are as if nothing happened. Cataract surgery is not for wimps. This is a hydrophilic IOL, I prefer to place it first in the anterior chamber and then carefully tuck the haptics one by one. Some trial and error is common and one must be sure that in the maneuver the posterior axis margin doesn't get caught. I 
I take advantage of the Rex's border to delicately fold the haptics and guide them in place, ensuring correct placement. Slightly moving the eye oil and observing the Rex's margins behavior gives you clues as to the haptics situation. If in doubt, take it out and place it again, like I'm doing now. Adjustments are done to be sure the IOL will have a stable position, then I proceed to aspirate the OVD. I have to dislodge one of the haptics out, but it is beneficial as it helps to evacuate the burger's space OVD very quickly, not only by aspiration but also with flow. Now I reposition the haptic with the help of the chopper before I take the IA probe out. Yeah, way to go boy! I finish over the evacuation and get out. 0.01% carbocol is injected to ensure immediate post-operative meiosis. Now I kind of overkill with the incision hydration and overpressure the eye a little, as this patient has a cuff. Maybe an incision suture could be placed, but I resort to a lifesaver trick, a subconjunctival injection of dexamethasone, which will help not only in providing some medication to a very difficult eye drop compliant patient, but also with nicely tamponading the incision. Search Neto Rosatelli on YouTube or click on the link below and visit my other channel with cataract fecal clips. Please like, share, subscribe and turn notifications on so you don't miss future videos. Thank you for watching.